Naruto Shibuden episodes 162, 163, and 164. Okay, so everyone in the autopsy room died. And then Kiba and his mom show up. Oh, <laughs> Kiba's mom's dog has a patch. Did the dog just talk? The dog talked! <laughs> I can't remember if I knew that about the dog. <laughs> you can tell this kid is a mama's boy, that's for sure. Oh my god, Shino and his family. <laughs> I love when they do stuff like this, when they show us what all the like random kids are doing and they're always like with their families. <laughs> Guy's team is not in the village right now. They're on their way back from a um, mission. But Neji's in the village, right? Yeah, he is. No, he's not, he's right here. For some reason I thought I saw him in the village, like one of the guards. Maybe it was just a guy who looked like him. <laughs> one of the pains shows up to chit-chat with Tsunade. Kiba managed to mark his appointed pain, you know, with the dog peeing. So um, they'll be able to follow it wherever it goes. So the pain that has gone to talk to Tsunade is the one that looks like Yakiko. And she recognizes him. And he's like, yep, totally. So, of course, all he wants is Naruto, and Tsunade is not about to let that happen. He's kind of giving them an ultimatum. If you don't tell me where Naruto is, then um, maybe this village isn't going to do so well. Meanwhile, um, what's her face? Sa... Sa... Tsunade's little friend, I can't remember her name for some reason, um, is talking to Ino and her dad about how the rods are like chakra receivers and each one can only do one specific kind of attacks. So they're figuring out based on Jiraiya's message that these six pains, none of them are the actual pain. They're like being manipulated from a distance. I totally figured out that a long time ago. Suddenly a pain jumps in between them and blows up a bomb. Oh no, it has her. The girl whose name I can't remember. It grabbed her and it was able to figure out where Naruto is because of course she knows. So now Pain knows where Naruto is. So the Pains are all getting ready to retreat and uh, Tsunade and her crew are thinking like maybe that's a good idea because we can get the village ready for when they attack again. Shizune, that's her name. Is she dead? So many people are dying. Meanwhile in the like toad land um, they've learned that one of their guys is dead, the, the frog guy that Donzo killed. So they're like, something must be up, we should probably uh, figure this out. And their minds actually immediately go to like, maybe Akatsuki attacked. All the pains have retreated, and uh, they allude to some kind of attack that he's going to use. Um, maybe to take out the entire village. Knowing that Naruto's not there, there's no sense in keeping them alive, I guess? So just as Pain is about to do his like, dramatic finishing move. It looks like Naruto has finally been summoned back to the village. Oh my goodness, this is doing so much damage to the village! <laughs> Aha! Jesus, he totally destroyed it. It's just rubble. Naruto finally does appear and has like a fancy new cape on and a bunch of frogs with him to fight and... Uh, the village exploded? <laughs> um, well, Sakura was saved because she was near a slug. So maybe that's how all the people survived. I hope so. <laughs> now we're just looking around like, where did we get summoned? I thought we were going back to the village. This is weird. Good news is Tsunade survived. <laughs> she looks out at the, the wasteland that is the village and is like, Oh shit. So there's a big deal about the, the mark on her forehead being missing, um, because she used up all of her chakra to protect the village, I guess. Okay, now we're seeing how various people managed to survive the blast. Um, Iruka survived, and um, Shino and anyone who happened to be near Shino survived. Oh good, Konohamaruni Bisu survived. That's good. Everyone we care about survived, including Choji's dad, which is nice. And now Choji is standing over Kakashi. And is there a chance that Kakashi is not dead? Because that would be wonderful. <laughs> and Hinata's okay, and her like handler who is taking care of her 
got a little bit injured and she helped him. Oh, and Shikamaru is okay, and so is his little secret admirer. His little geeky secret admirer. And his dad. <laughs> I guess he broke his leg. He just kind of reported it like, we're all alive, but <sighs> my leg's broken. <sighs> all of the pains gather to face off against Naruto. But Tsunada gets there first, and she's like, no, nah, I'm going to take care of this. This is crazy what you've done to my village. I guess Naruto just took out one of the pains. Just like, pfft, like that. It's a sage mode, I guess. <laughs> Everyone's feeling very nostalgic looking at Naruto, thinking about Jiraiya and thinking about, um, Minato. Yeah. Um, and he's already stronger than them, I guess. <laughs> it's so cute. Um, Naruto sends Tsunade off to take cover. And, um, um, but Tsunade leaves, like, one of her little slugs with him, and it's, like, really tiny, it, like, slithers around. <laughs> it's cute. Was that Naruto just learning that Kagashi's dead? Oh, he took that, like, an adult. Oh, I think Tsunade's, like, getting all aged and withered. Is that because the, the thing on her forehead's not there anymore? That's interesting. So now the battle begins. Naruto versus Six Pains. Naruto said he was going to use an attack that the Pains can't see. And whatever he meant by that, it seems to have worked. So now Pain is talking about, like, one time Jiraiya was my master and I learned attacks from him and all of that stuff. Isn't it interesting that you and I have the same master? Naruto has decided he doesn't have to listen to this and he's just going to use his uh, brand new attack um, that I guess he, that no one has ever seen before. He's developed it on his own. Oh yeah, it's the Rasen Shuriken. A thing that I couldn't pronounce for some reason. Oh, that's the end of that episode. Naruto has just thrown the Rasen Shuriken at all of the pains. We have one more episode to watch, and here it goes. Most of the pains dodge, but one of them gets hit. Shikamaru wanted to go and help, but his dad was like, no, seriously, like we just have to stay out of his way. He's a sage now, he's in a different class. So they've done kind of this extravagant attack that's enveloped one of the panes in total darkness. Oh, did I just not catch that, or am I stupid? <laughs> uh, it was actually inside the biggest frog's mouth. And uh, she's destroyed, so that's the end of that one. So what does this make? Is this three panes left, or just two panes left? One was destroyed immediately. One was destroyed by the shuriken. One was just destroyed now, so yeah, three left. Oh, but Naruto's not in sh sage mode anymore. So, of course he's not in sage mode anymore, so they think they ought to merge, but they can't merge because of the QB, so there's apparently some other brilliant idea that Naruto has. Okay, so he got out of sage mode, so he just has to get back into sage mode, and then he can do two more Rasa and Shurikens, and then he can do that another time after that. So he has, like, four more, I guess. <laughs> oh... So there's two more clones in the other world in sage mode. So he was just fighting with a clone the whole time? Or maybe these are clones? Well, whatever happened, he's back in sage mode and it was pretty awesome. So he hurls the Russ and Shuriken at Pain, the one that looks like Yakiko. Then the big guy jumps in front and absorbs it. So I guess it's just the two of them left. I thought there was three, but I guess I miscounted somewhere. Oh, okay, no, no, that was one that we thought we had killed earlier, because we punched him in the face that one time. So, oh yeah, so there's still three. <laughs> it's so hard to keep track of all of them. Naruto sets his sight on the one that can absorb ninjutsu attacks. Because unless they get rid of him, then um, they're not going to be able to use, obviously, any ninjutsu attacks. So he pretends to throw one of the Rasa and Shurikens at him, but instead he just ends up tackling him with a, um, with a clone, and then he hurls a real one at the Yahiko pain. But as soon as it touches him, it just, like, dispels. Another clone attacks another pain, and with, uh, with uh, two Rasengans. <laughs> this is so many of all of them. And now they're like, we're not sure if you understood exactly what happened, so we're going to explain it. <laughs> Just when he's going to be able to attack the two remaining pains, 
um, the Yahiko Pain's power activates and he's able to blow them back with his uh, gravity powers. It's weird to me that, that both Naruto and the Akatsuki have the same color scheme right now. So they figure that the only way to beat Pain at this point is to use Genjutsu. Um, and knowing that Naruto sucks at Genjutsu, they're gonna have to do it for him. The frogs are. All three of the giant summoned toads have been thrown back by Pain's power, so it's pretty much just Naruto and the two little tiny old frogs left. And that's where the episode ends! Alright, so that triple feature is over, and people did want me to watch the opening theme song at the end of this group of episodes to just, like, get a reaction to it, but I can't promise it'll be interesting, but I'm gonna do it. So, the, the, I mean, I thought it was good, it was okay, <laughs> nothing revolutionary. I think, that in general, Naruto opening theme songs have definitely been stepping up their game, but definitely including way too many spoilers. But they showed a lot of matchups that we haven't seen yet, and I somehow don't think that we're going to see them. Um, which disappoints me a little bit because I want to see them. <laughs> I want to see the matchups that they promised me, but I don't think it's going to happen. Anyway, the next uh, Naruto video, I think it's just two episodes, uh, just 165 and 166. So I'll see you for that. Bye!